The story starts with a pair of vintage photo collectors finding a picture of a disfigured man holding what seems like a harpoon in 2007. As the photo surfaced the internet, people suggested that the man was no ordinary man, but Phineas Gage and his first discovered image of him. He would later be labeled as the man who began neuroscience. On September 13, 1848, Phineas Gage was working on a railroad in Cavendish, Vermont. He was packing gunpowder into the ground with the metal rod. Unfortunately, the powder ignited which shot the rod through his left cheek and exited through the skull before landing 80 feet away. He was still conscious and walked over to a cart that would later take him to Dr. John Martin Harlow, who had documented the details of this case. He was semi-comatose from September 23rd to October 3rd due to an infection. On October 7th, he was able to walk out of bed and by October 11th, his thinking began to improve. Gage was able to remember how the accident occurred and he was left with a blind left eye with visible scars from the accident. Although he had a stark change in behavior and was not hireable by the same train track. And so he became a long distance stagecoach driver in Chile. After several seizures, Gage died on May 21st, 1860. The brain is made up of many different regions. These regions, or lobes, work in unison to help make us who we are. However, when even one is damaged, how our brain functions can be severely altered. In the case of Phineas Gage, a 2021 study showed that the metal tamping rod had destroyed 11% of the white matter in his frontal lobe and 4% in his cerebral cortex. Through the documented notes of John Martin Harlow, scientists learned that Gage did not suffer from any memory loss, but had trouble estimating size and amounts of money. The most drastic effect demonstrated by Phineas Gage was the change in personality. His friends had described his new behavior as being aggressive when the man they knew before was pleasant and hardworking. This newfound discovery sparked a realization in the minds of scientists at the time. In the 1800s, neuroscience was still building a credible foundation for itself. Their primary development at the time was phrenology, which is the study of bumps on one's head. It was believed that these bumps determine one's personality and characteristics. However, with the discovery of Phineas Gage and his incident, scientists theorized that there was a connection between brain function and the associated sections of the brain. As we know now, the frontal lobe where Phineas Gage was hurt is responsible for emotional processing and rational thinking. But at the time, scientists continued to return back to this interesting case to learn more about what this lobe does. In the 1940s, Stanley Cobb diagrammed the skull to determine the path of the tamping iron. In the 1980s, scientists tried to determine the path of the tamping iron using CT scans. In the 1990s, scientists used a 3D printer to determine the path of the tamping iron. Finally, in 2012, Van Horn and his team used the CT scans of Gage's skull with MRI scans of unaffected brains to see how Gage was influenced by the iron rod. Malcolm Macmillan, a professor at the Melbourne School of Psychological Sciences, believed that rehabilitation is possible considering the choice of employment that Gage made after the accident requires focus and planning, something that is primarily a function of the frontal lobes. It's safe to say that Phineas Gage lived an adventurous life, from working as a foreman on the railway to being a revolutionary step in the field of neuroscience and psychology, his impact on the world carries on today. Harvard University continues to honor him by exhibiting his skull and the tamping rod he held since the accident in their museum.